Hi. Um, thank you, Joanne. Um, and first of all, I'd like to really apologize for not being uh, able to attend the panel because of um, a travel uh, glitch I had. Um, I work with the International Livestock Research Institute, and we have several, a large number of programs where I'm involved, especially in uh, policy interventions and working at the grassroots level stakeholders uh, on eco-health, especially in uh, Asia, but also in uh, Africa. And with that perspective in with, and with that experience, uh, my interpretation of complexity in eco-health communication is a bit different. Uh, um, Eco-health, uh, I see as an approach, a concept, a philosophy that uh, is um, uh, the, that can only be successful if we are able to reach out to a cross-section of stakeholders uh, in, uh, representing cross-section of disciplines. Um, so a very, very critical success factor or an important impact pathway for eco-health is, um, is reaching out or communicating uh, to a large number of different types of stakeholders at, at different levels, spanning policy makers to, um, to, to communities, all stakeholders being equally important in, in this whole process. This, to me, is a complexity. Um, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to flag five, uh, five points that the panel perhaps can discuss later. Um, one is, um, um, my first point would be, eco-health is a means to solve complexities and getting different disciplines together. So it should be seen as a solution to complexity. It should not become, uh, become a cause of complexity. Uh, number two is um, communication in eco-health is about packaging the right information in a right way. It could be the same message. Uh, say, for example, in case of Ebola virus, it could be the same message, but the way we package it and communicate with different stakeholders must be different. The policymaker wants to, wants to see it from a different angle. The private sector wants to see it from a trade implication point of view, community from a different view, so forth. So it's how do we, how do we package the same message in, in, in a in way to respond to different priorities of different stakeholders, I think is very very, very critical um, in, in communicating uh, eco-health. My third point uh, is um, communication is more complex, and this is our experience throughout. Communication is more complex when it is top-down. The moment the moment you involve the, the, the people at the grassroots level, the people at the local level, regional level, the complexity of that communication message actually dissolves. And, and therefore, uh, we've been advocating the need for creating a pool of regional champions who, who can act as our communicators, act as our local ambassadors. It's, 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 it plays an extremely important role. My fourth point is communication is definitely a two-way arrow. We often think that you know communication means you know a message going from from people like us to to the grassroots level. As much as speaking to them and talking to them is important, listening to them and getting getting a sense of their priorities at the grassroots level is extremely important. So communication can be successful only if it is done as a two-way arrow. My last point. Uh, is communication may be a very, very complex issue, but communication is inevitable. The only way eco-health approach can be successful, the only way we can reach out with, that, with this concept to a large number of people and make that impact is, uh, uh, is uh, by effective communication. And therefore, even if it sounds uh, complex, you know, often because of its complexity, a uh, lot of projects and a lot of people uh, sort of avoid communicating with, with certain uh, stakeholders. So even if it is complex, I think it is, it is very important to, to communicate. So uh, finally, I, would, I really strongly believe that complexity is a good thing. In case of eco-health, it should be seen as an opportunity. Uh, it should not be seen as a challenge. Thank you very much. It's uh, David Waldner Tapes uh, from Veterinaire Sans Frontier Canada. I have a question. You talked about communicating different packages to different stakeholders. What if those stakeholders have fundamentally different 
value perspectives on the same situation. So for one group, deforestation in Brazil to grow soybeans is a solution. It brings in foreign exchange, you have increased agricultural production and so on. For other groups, the groups that are displaced, for uh, those of us that care about global environmental services, this is not a solution, this is a problem. How do you, what's our role as eco-health communicators within that? Other than to simply say, here's the situation which we can describe scientifically from different um, backgrounds, do we make a value decision to say, we're going to side with this group or that other group, and if so, how do we do that? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, David. I, by communication packages, I I mean, uh, you know, tailor making the messages so that it it kind of responds to different priorities and it it makes sense to different stakeholders, right? For example. A classic example often is in um, you know where you know a policymaker is is brought to a scientific meeting. We we keep showing them a lot of scientific data and things like that. They you know there is a very little impact and influence that that, that they have on that um, research papers. No matter how great they are, and I'm 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 really sorry for all those all those people who who really believe in publishing a lot. It's a great thing. It's a great way of communicating. But then that impact has on a on a very niche audience how do we how do we you know so how do we bring out or 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 extract some of the key messages from that research paper so that that then responds to the policy makers five bullet points on this is the problem, and this is what uh, you know. This could be the solution. I think it's a, a, you know that 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 kind of tailor making is is very important. The other thing, David, I I very strongly feel as uh, is that uh, you know eco health should be should be you know rather than pushing eco health, we should create a pull for eco health, and that's that's extremely uh, extremely um, uh, important component. So that you know we are we are. We are sort of promoting eco health, but we are promoting eco health not as the only tool. And often we, we we think of it as the only solution for all sorts of problems around the world, the diverse problems you spoke about. Uh, I think eco health is is a is an important tool, but it is one of the tools in the toolboxes. And and that that is a message that we need to we we must really not no matter how convinced we are, we must not uh, overdo. Uh, on uh, on 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 showcasing eco health as the only as as a silver bullet or something like that <laughs>